Everyone close your eyes for just a second, if you will. I need you to think back to your sixth birthday party. They just put the cake in front of you. The candle is lit. It's your chance. You get to make the wish. You take a deep, big, deep breath and blow out the candle. Now everyone open your eyes for just a moment. On the count of three, I want everyone to shout out what your wish was for your six-year-old self. Now I'm serious, this is on tape, and if you don't shout it out, this is gonna be a really awkward moment in the speech. <laughs> One, two, three. I caught the dinosaur there at the end. Some may have wanted to play for the Dallas Cowboys or be a firefighter or a flight attendant or get a pony or a unicorn or that brand new bike. Whatever it was, we all held on to that little morsel of hope, that possibility that maybe, just maybe, that wish is about to come true. One of my favorite speakers on this topic is Randy Posh. Many of you know Randy for the last lecture at Carnegie Mellon University that he gave. Now, last lectures at Carnegie Mellon were not rare. What was rare, rare about this instance is that when he gave the lecture about a month or two before, he had been diagnosed with the rare form of pancreatic cancer that was terminal. In fact, this was truly one of his last lectures. So when he got up there to talk about pursuing childhood dreams, he asked the question, are you a Tigger or are you an Eeyore? A Tigger is just so happy all the time, bounces around, couldn't wait to pursue everything with full gusto. Always happy, always exciting, always the smile brought to the stage. Versus poor Eeyore. Eeyore just had that gray cloud above his head and seemed so sad all the time. See, Posh went on to say, what were his two childhood dreams? Number one, he wanted to play in the NFL. He played some little league football but he didn't have the talent. He didn't achieve that dream. But he went full speed after the second one. He wasn't gonna let that hold him back. His second dream, he wanted to be a Disney Imagineer. See, when he was eight years old, he went to Disneyland. And he looked around and saw all the amazing rides, all the amazing activities and thought, this is what I wanna be a part of. He just couldn't wait. And so he applied to Disney to be an Imagineer and guess what, he got denied. He kept that letter. He applied again and he got denied. He kept that letter. And all this time he decided, I'm going to continue following my passion. As a junior faculty member at Carnegie Mellon University, he became really, really good at virtual reality machines. So good that Disney caught word of it. They called, they asked him to come down, and he helped create the magic carpets of Aladdin in Florida. His second wish did come true. So my question is, what's your wish? What's not that six-year-old wish that you shouted out a little while ago, but what's your dream that right now, if you could just check it off the list, wow, you're there. You accomplished exactly what you hoped to do. Let me tell you about my wishes. Number one, I wanted to be a t-ball coach. I didn't want to be a baseball coach. I wanted to talk to young kids about the sport that I loved. I've now coached my son and my daughter in T-ball and getting ready for a new season. It's so awesome to talk to them about which first base do you run to because sometimes <laughs> third base looks just like first. <laughs> which butterfly can I chase and not chase? What dirt am I allowed to throw and what do I get in trouble for? I love T-ball. It opens the door to a sport that I love. The second one though, the second wish that I have I'm on my way. I'm not quite there yet. In fact, many of you will make fun of me. I want to be a clown. Not just any clown, I want to be Ronald McDonald. See, there's something special about Ronald. Yeah, I already have the shoe, that's a good start. There's something special about Ronald. Part of his job is that he has to go to hospitals to bring a smile to young kids' faces. That's a pretty cool gig, don't you think? His job is to bring a smile. He's not scary clown. He's happy Ronald. We buy fries from him. 
So I thought about what do I need to do to help fulfill my goal? What are those short-term goals to help me get to this long-term goal? I learned to juggle. I wasn't quite bold enough to do it here today. I can do three. I can't quite do four or five. I'm working on it though. But the second thing I did is I wanted to know how do I get to a hospital to make children smile? So I became a wish granter with Make-A-Wish. I've done this now for about eight years. In fact, this last summer, I got to be a part of a national Make-A-Wish campaign to help bring more acknowledgement to the amazing programs that they offer. I wrote, sometimes I've sat down and thought, if laughter's the best medicine, is Make-A-Wish the world's best doctor? Redo my car, make over my living room. Can I really meet my favorite princess? I want to swim with dolphins. I want to meet my favorite musician. I want to help other kids going through what I just did. All of these are wishes I've worked alongside my wife with. All of them have brought laughter. All of them have brought a new energy to an old b battle. I believe in the power of laughter. I believe in the power of a wish. Think about it. Eighty-nine percent of doctors, nurses, and health professionals survey said the wish experience can actually change the physical health of the child going through the life-threatening illness. Physical, not their emotional health, it can actually make them get better. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of it? Did you know in this, this past year, every 30 minutes a wish was granted in the United States? In 2015, they granted 14,800 wishes. 96% of parents who had the wish granted said the wish experience actually brought their family closer together. Wow. You just can't beat such an experience like that. I do want to talk about one of my favorite wishes. This is Alyssa. She was 10 years old when we met her. And she said, I don't want to go somewhere I don't want to do something. I'll tell you what I want to do. I was diagnosed with an illness that had to be treated in California, and she's from Oklahoma. She said, I didn't know what to pack in my bag for three weeks. So she said, I want to build a website in my voice, because I didn't understand what doctors were telling me. I want to be able to tell kids what to pack in their bags and what treats to bring in that bag to share some smiles with some other kids on their hall. It was amazing. Alyssa.wish.org. Oh yeah, and on the side, she went ahead and uh, raised, she wanted to raise some money for the local Children's Hospital Foundation. So in three months, she raised $10,000. Not too bad for a 10-year-old. The number one wish for Make-A-Wish is Disney. About 50% of all Disney wishes, of all Make-A-Wish wishes are for Disney. They are so good at granting wishes that they created a program called the Year of a Million Dreams back in 2006. What's fascinating about it is their program went from 06 to December 2008. Figure 26 months for a year of a million dreams. It was that good. <laughs> so one thing that they did is they empowered their cast members or their staff to say, whatever it takes, see if you can make a guest their day something special. Can you make their wish come true before they even know to ask it? Imagine walking onto Main, uh, Main Street USA and you're dubbed the mayor. That's pretty cool. Imagine getting to stay the night in Cinderella's castle. People actually got to do that. Imagine when they walk up to you and say, hey, you see that long line over there? I can take you to the front. That means something at Disney World if you've ever been there. Those wishes cost Disney not a single dime, but it has people like me standing up here telling you all about it because it's amazing. It's all about the power of a wish. Posh said, the key question to keep asking, are you spending your time on the right things? Because time is all you have. He asked, are you a Tigger or are you an Eeyore? I'm not quite Ronald McDonald yet, but I sure am working towards it. So my challenge for you, number one, how can you help make someone else's wish come true? And number two, are you a Tigger? Or are you in New York? Thank you.